Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of Voices from Our Schools. I'm Kimberly Stender, the host of today's program. And with me today, I have two amazing women as my guests. I have Superintendent of Schools, Maria Garrick. Hi, Kim. Hello, Maria. And the most phenomenal executive assistant, <laughs> Debbie Westmoreland, who assists Maria on her day-to-day -day calendar activities and everything else. So Thank you, Kim. You're nice welcome. To be here. I'm glad. And welcome to Thank our you. show. We have a lot to talk about. We do. And I think today we're going to focus on our Welcome Back to School edition. Great. Our voices from our school. Now, school's <coughs> opened. Yes, it is. Thursday, August 30th was the first day of school. Mm -hmm. It was a gorgeous day. The right. buildings looked phenomenal. The grounds. It was so great to see all the faculty pull into the parking lots and the buses roll up and the kids jumping out of carpools. And now we're in full swing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. And it's always, um, it's so much fun when kids join us again because, and I think probably for the past three or four weeks I keep saying, oh, just get those kids back in these schools <laughs> because people have this um, belief that the, the schools are dormant during the summer mm -hmm. and that, oh, it's vacation time. But it's truthfully one of those periods of time mm -hmm. where the adults really focus on their work. Yeah. Um, so you see, as you mentioned, the facilities look exceptional. You know, we have our custodial maintenance staff really doing all of the work trying to do repairs, but also mm -hmm. just the, the heavy duty cleaning. Mm -hmm. We've had our um, information systems really putting in newer technology. Mm -hmm. We have teachers in there, you know, working on curriculum. And then the administrative team really thinking about things like updating handbooks, which I know sounds probably very dreary and boring to people, <laughs> but it's like some of the critical regulatory pieces we have to do, mm -hmm. um, as well as really thinking about what is our focus for the year or and for the next few years. Mm -hmm. So we spend a substantial amount of time planning for our leadership team work and um, messaging and what we're asking our principals and assistant principals to bring back to the school level. Mm -hmm. um, so all of you sit there with me in the frantic pace of the summer. Um, so, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And it's it a is. fun ride. It is, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. very busy. It is. But it's wonderful. And we, and live, we live to tell the tale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we Every do. Year. Yes, we do. So, and it is the most wonderful thing when you actually have the students walk back in that door and mm -hmm. to see their faces because whether people believe this or not, um, the staff are as excited mm -hmm. and anxious and you know have that same first day feeling mm -hmm. as the students. Mm -hmm. So to see everyone come back in with that level of excitement and um, energy is beautiful. It was. Mm -hmm. And you had the opportunity to visit some of the schools on the first day. I did. And venture around into classrooms and cafeterias and right. really see all the planning put into place. Exactly. And, and it was a very remarkably smooth start mm -hmm. to the school year. Yes. Um, I know people would knock on wood right now because we've just started, um, if you, you believe in that. But it really was, I'd say in the past you know, three or four years, really being very closely connected to the start of the school year, mm -hmm. it was beautifully smooth. Um, yeah, don't you think? Yeah, there were very few um, calls to central office, at least, about any any sort of issues. We just felt really, really prepared. That's great. At all of the buildings this year. So I'd love to say, you know, before we get too far into this, but um, Debbie, who I know routinely, I'm going to say you're at the, the point here, but she routinely sh sits with me at school committee meetings and probably <laughs> avoids that camera. as. <laughs> Often as possible, I avoid the camera. <laughs> but I, it was important to, for me and, and for Kim to have Debbie here because you're such an important part of a school system and, and it's the infrastructure behind the scenes where people, you're not the classroom teacher that right. the children and families are seeing every day, but the amount of work and organization to keep all of us um, together Mm -hmm. that you provide to a system, you know, I just want to say thank you publicly. Oh, well, no. I appreciate that. I actually, when I first started my career, um, I had just graduated from college when we moved up here and I knew I wanted to work in a school. I had planned to teach. Mm -hmm. I had my certification. And I got a position as a clerical support staff member in the district and found out, oh, this is just as wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm not in front of the kids, but I'm doing things that help the teachers who are in front of the kids and make a difference for the kids. And it's something that I feel I'm pretty good at. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so it, it was a wonderful way to be in schools. Um, when you were talking about the cycle of starting school, mm -hmm. I get that feeling every year, just like the kids do. Mm -hmm. right. It's very exciting to know classes are starting back, and I look forward to that every year. So, 
it's a great way to be involved. See, and that's what I love to um, to be able to affect change at a wider systems perspective. Mm -hmm. Is I think why many people um, enjoy once they enter, whether it's like a central office, mm -hmm. because people are thinking, you know, oh, I'm going to miss, you know, being working with kids on a day to day, mm -hmm. or I'm going to miss, you know, kind of a, that closer to the school connection. Mm -hmm. However, being able to really see the plans actualize and become reality mm -hmm. is is powerful. So I, I know exactly what you're you're feeling right. when you're talking about the work. And part of the planning is to bring a level of spirit and cooperation amongst our staff and our mm -hmm. school community as well as right. our students and families. Yeah. So we had a few events that led up mm -hmm. to the yes, opening did. day mm -hmm. of school. Yes. And the first being, of course, the um, Project Backpack, yes. which is now in its third year. Right. Mm -hmm. And this year, um, having kind of led that initiative, mm -hmm. I can proudly say Right. that we distributed over 400 backpacks this year. Which is wonderful. It yeah, is, so and it's due in, in most part to the generosity of our community, mm -hmm. our community partners, those right. organizations that we partner with every day on other events and, and um, initiatives. But, uh, you know, to see the Rotary Club bring in 100 backpacks, mm -hmm. UMass mm -hmm. bring in backpacks, Amherst College, the Lions Club, right. and then various businesses around town, Starbucks this year, right. DeMeo Orthodontist, um, just everyone kind of pitched in to Jones Library, and they really made um, the first day of school special for 400 of our students. Right, who and it is a gift. It's a gift, and mm -hmm. the families are so appreciative. It's mm -hmm. my favorite, two of my favorite days right. in the whole calendar year is, is to see these kids come in, be able to pick out these brand new backpacks mm -hmm. full of supplies right. that will enable them to succeed this year. So. And there are, I mean, the, the amount of supplies that are really needed for a school year, I mean, that's substantial. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I, the thing that I really love about, um, again, about the Backpack Project is that people can contribute at any level that, and that mm -hmm. they're comfortable or able. So it was, you know, there's beautiful moments when you have parents coming in with um, a six-year-old who's carrying the backpack that they're mm -hmm. going to deliver to another, you know, child for school. Mm -hmm. So it really also fosters that sense of community and giving at all levels, you know, the, mm -hmm. the larger partners and organizations, but mm -hmm. also individuals. Right. Um, so it's been, I, I think, highly successful. Um, and we do give the backpacks out throughout the year, and we also right. accept donations throughout the year mm -hmm. so that all is not lost. If people have not contributed at this moment, we right. will. And keep them coming. <laughs> keep right. meet them. And Interfaith Opportunities Network, too. Oh, uh, which led the charge. Well, they've been huge supporters of the mm -hmm. schools and of our, our families and, and children for many, many years. Many years. Absolutely. A great group of people. We also, Kim, um, how many uh, booster seats and right. child seats? Can you talk a little bit about that, too? Oh, absolutely. I'm so asking you questions now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Amherst Police Department, in conjunction with the UMass Police Department and the mm -hmm. Safe Seats of Springfield organization, um, distributed and installed uh, over 40 car seats this year to oh, families who were in need of um, of these uh, safety um, and boosters and yeah, yeah all the all the stuff that you know they need um, for their families. So that was very successful as well. So we want to thank those yeah. three organizations for helping us, and they really did a great job and and uh, very efficient and um, nice people who who work mm -hmm. in those programs. Well, that's great. So it, it helped a lot of families. And then um, on, gosh, August 29th, we had yes. convocation. Yeah, which, you know, is such an important moment. And to be mm -hmm. able to welcome back our faculty and staff who come every year with renewed energy to meet the needs of children, which is, I think, um, one of, if not the most important um, the most important work in the world in the world mm -hmm. and that requires an amazing amount of persistence dedication mm -hmm. um, you know commitment to this work it's it is a lot that we ask of our, our faculty and staff on a daily basis mm -hmm. so to set that tone for the first day is so much fun um, so each year as, as you all well know <laughs> you know I, I get to spend a lot of time thinking about well not a lot of time but I probably dream it you know what what's the message that we want staff to walk away with each mm -hmm. year and in turn it's the message that they give to their students so each year it's ha been a little bit of a different message the first year was um, in the blink of an eye is that the, the yes. first or no voices, voices from, from our, our students, students first right. which was a video as you know of um, 
asking children to kind of reflect on the start of a school year and what they want their teachers to know about them and mm -hmm. to kind of give that first day feel and 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 had the staff watched that as well and they really walked away again I thought it was very successful we walked away with that excitement and that mm -hmm. feeling for the um, the start of the year and what it means for kids um, the second year we did in a blink of an eye because again it's about helping staff to have that feeling of there's a very short period of time that we are charged with this critically important work and that we mm -hmm. want our you know we want us all to take that so seriously and use the time well and we showed kindergartners and graduates um, and this year, the focus was again on um, our students because mm -hmm. that's where we all want to sit in, in our mission-related work. We can talk about all of the, our accomplishments, which we do, mm -hmm. but to really help people to f have that emotional tug around mm -hmm. why are we here to begin mm -hmm. with. Um, so we had uh, uh, some alumni come back. We sure did. Yeah. So again, it was to help our staff to help children and students envision their future selves mm -hmm. to see who they could be what is their potential who do they want mm -hmm. to be in the future and then to support them in reaching mm -hmm. that um, so we had alumni come we had several um, well we actually we had several alumni from various years contribute um, tributes yeah. to Wonderful faculty tributes. and staff that they remember is going that up way on back. the website yet? Kim? Yes, everything's okay, up great. on the website. Everything from convocation, from the speeches to great. the faculty tribute to the um, video link. Great, they're all up, so folks can can tune into arps.org and read and, and watch these videos that we enjoyed at convocation. And it's powerful what people walk away from their school mm -hmm. experience and how meaningful school is, and and that carries with them throughout their lives. And we also had some of our alumni join us. We yes. had Cinda Jones. Yes, Cinda Jones. Class, class of, of 1986. 86. Uh, we had, uh, is it Kathleen McKay? Kathleen yes. McKay, class, class of, of 1945. 1945, who was in the audience, who was also an educator. Mm -hmm. um, at Mark's Meadow. At Mark's Meadow for 30 years. 30 years. So it was That's powerful. And, and I have to say, the, one of the most beautiful quotes is she was like, I'm, I'm so envious that <laughs> you're all walking back into this right. work and there was mm -hmm. nothing um, more wonderful than that energy coming back for that first day. So we were, it was wonderful to have her there. And then we also had Max Page, mm -hmm. who um, is a community member, has his, his children in our schools, and is a professor at UMass. Mm -hmm. He grew up in Amherst. Grew up in Amherst. His beautiful, children beautiful of, speech. Of teachers, child of teachers. Yeah. And, and his mom was in the audience as well. His mom was there. <laughs> and now he's come full circle because yeah. his children are in our schools. And he spoke so eloquently. Yeah. Yes, and um, really um, got many messages across right. to our faculty and staff. And About the power of the work mm -hmm. and what it means to people. Right. Not only, um, you know, that th they as individuals, but their children, their children's children. Right. Modeling the language mm -hmm. of the, the, how we ended our convocation, which was with a really powerful video. Mm -hmm. um, which we weren't able to this year to use our own students in a video. However, we um, pulled up a video that was um, sent to us a number of years ago, um, actually by our prior superintendent, Jerry Hockman, sent that mm -hmm. a number of years ago. And it was a, a young man, who, 10 years old, speaking to 20,000 faculty and staff in, was it Dallas, Texas? Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. Texas, and how powerful his message was mm -hmm. that we all need, that. We need to believe in our students. Mm -hmm. We need to believe that in their future selves and that they can be creative and that they can you know, reach their highest potential mm -hmm. and the message of, of believing in your colleagues. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole day, I mean, from the feedback I've received is that it was really a powerful day Absolutely. and set a beautiful tone mm -hmm. for the school year. And it reminds teachers of, of their mission. Absolutely. I, a lot of people have said to me that they were either wiping away tears or mm -hmm. not even trying to wipe away the tears. Mm -hmm. It right. really got to them, particularly the video. Well, and I also, I do believe that as educators and many adults in our, mm -hmm. in our world, we can stay in kind of in our heads all the time. We think about right. what we need to do. We're always extremely busy. We're, you know, focused on the next steps. Sometimes it's really important to slow down and to feel and to be reminded mm -hmm why we're actually doing this work. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that we accomplished that on the first mm -hmm. day. Absolutely. So and in the public school arena. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Public schools. Public education is the key. Right. Horace Mann, thank you very much. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> we wouldn't be here without you. 
like it was a wonderful day and then mm -hmm. a wonderful night. A wonderful evening on the Amhersttown Common when we had the first day celebration. And again, mm -hmm. um, a wonderful uh, show of support from families and students and uh, community members, faculty and staff. Our principals right. spoke and Maria, you spoke. For a few minutes. For just a few <laughs> moments. And it was just a nice um, get together, a nice right. opportunity to visit with folks after a, a summer vacation. Right. We had our community partner tables out there, mm -hmm. um, which was great. We had folks from uh, Eric Carl Museum, UMass Athletics, AEF, Cole Children, the Jones yeah. Library. So families were able to access materials from them. And, right. and also we unveiled the community outreach vehicle yes. that we're all so proud of. And maybe Maria, you want to Absolutely. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's you know it so fits within the mission of community, which I think um, how first day started in Amherst. I'd love to just go back to mm -hmm. that too. Is I know a, a, a group of citizens who were really involved with, and I, I believe the concept was originally brought to us by Momadou Sar, yes. who's one of our mm -hmm. staff members. And I think um, there was huge commitment, and then there were some ebbs and flows over years, so that we really took the lead with, you know, building on what was in place before we, we reinvigorated, mm -hmm. which was, again, celebrate with your community mm -hmm. the education of our children. Um, and the outreach van kind of fits right in with that, that goal. Um, and this was, again, a part of a dream, you know, mm -hmm. the, the dreaming and being creative uh, with a group of people, um, Laura Reichsman from Family Outreach of Amherst and Renee Moss from Big Brothers Big Sisters, mm -hmm. Dr. Marta Guevara mm -hmm. from our school system. Um, I know John musanti has been in the conversation mm -hmm. from the town or of Rhodes um, as a community member, school mm -hmm. committee member, and as a Rotary member. Um, we started to really think about how do we provide connections or strengthen connections to um, certain communities within our community whose voices may be underrepresented in our mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. In particular, we have some pockets of poverty in our community and how do we reach out to people mm -hmm. to help to, to make sure that we're providing services, supports, and having input into what family members want to see in our schools. Mm -hmm. So our envision, you know, what we envisioned at that time was to think about um, to create the opportunity of a like a vehicle and of mm -hmm. course, you know, being really a product of the 60s and 70s and being totally goofy. I was thinking about, you know, the, the Partridge family <laughs> bus and then, you know, we have the ding-dong carts and you know, how do you actually create an opportunity where a vehicle mm -hmm. comes and there's excitement about what that vehicle could be and what it could provide. So um, we worked closely with Family Outreach mm -hmm. and CHD, which is their, um, the agency that supports their work, mm -hmm. and they provided Family Outreach with a van. Nice. So now we are oh, creating okay. the van, which we have to think of what the name is going to be. We're having all kinds of fun thinking of that. I don't think they're going to go with my suggestions, <laughs> mind you. Um, but it's how do we then all as a community partner together <laughs> to provide services and supports to families and children mm -hmm. And from the different areas that we all, you know, have a sphere of influence, you know, family mm -hmm. outreach and um, the town of Amherst and the health department and the schools. Mm -hmm. And how do we create a great opportunity? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's really fun. We're, we're getting there. We are. I think we, we've come a long way. Yes, we have. We have. I just want to jump to central office. Great. I know a lot of changes have taken place yes. over the course of almost a year. Yeah. Where you brought in some administrators yep. and you've created opportunities um, for them to improve what was in place. Right. Yeah, I would love to talk about that. We have, you know, we have an amazing staff, faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. And they are all they have all come here for the right reasons. You know, we all have a, a similar mission of meeting the needs of all of our children. And we've, from my perspective, and I know I've said this before, I think we've over-relied on um, faculty and staff to make the difference for all of our children without providing some of the infrastructure and systems and mm -hmm. structures. Mm -hmm. So what we really have focused on is how do we build our leadership team to be able to support teachers in doing their work? They shouldn't have to. Um, figure out how to, what intervention do I provide for a student when they're struggling and how do I know when they're struggling? They, they should be engaged in the art of teaching. So we have um, Dr. Rhonda Cohen, who many people have come to know over the past year, who's our Director of Teaching and Learning, who's exceptional. Mm -hmm. We've added, um, through some reconfiguration of staff, Dr. Ian Stiff, mm -hmm. who will be the K through 8 Math Science Coordinator, because we've recognized how critical it is to be able mm -hmm. to have um, those transition periods um, held well and created well in terms of curricular alignment and support. Mm -hmm. So um, Ian's joining us in that role. 
and um, Dr. Faye Brady, who was um, a hire just about six or eight weeks ago now, and who's uh, filled my own old position years ago, who's Director of Student Services, who is exceptional. She's joining us, mm -hmm. um, coming from New Jersey, brand new to the area, um, and I know she's reached out to lots of community members already, so yes. she's making strong connections. And uh, Dr. Marta Guevara is, is in our role, continues as a director, um, however, we'll be focusing much more around the work of community and family engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and once I talk uh, for a minute about Mike Morris, I'd love to go back to really thinking about the overarching work around um, meeting the needs of all of our students, which was framed by some of the Dr. F Ferguson's work, mm -hmm. and how that really has informed where Marta, where Marta's leading the work this year, as well as where Mike is leading the work. So can I jump right into that? You go right ahead. Excellent. <laughs> so Mike Morris is joining us. He was the principal of Crocker Farm. And now we have um, Derek Shea and we have um, Annie Foley mm -hmm. as co-principals this year. Um, so Mike has joined us and he's focusing on the educator evaluation model, which is a brand new mm -hmm. model from the state that we have to implement now. Mm -hmm. um, and he's also helping us to create data systems. So how do we use information to inform instruction mm -hmm. so that teachers, again, don't have to figure out what information am I going to use that should be user friendly, it should be in front of us, not only to inform instruction, but also to hold us all accountable to making progress with our, our students. Mm -hmm. So Mike is doing an exceptional job because the educator evaluation system is um, it's a massive mm -hmm. model mm -hmm. um, which requires quite a bit of a shift in, in work. We have been prepped for that work because we have been doing walkthroughs and we have collaborative teams, which is critical to this, mm -hmm. this model. Um, and um, we've just really spent a lot of time creating that culture mm -hmm. of focusing on instruction mm -hmm. with fundamental instructional practices and identifying what we hope to see in classrooms. So we're actually positioned extremely well. I think many, many school systems are struggling with how do you implement, and mm -hmm. people could ask me, so why are you putting a person in place, like you're adding someone here? There's nothing more important than actually implementing a system of supervision and evaluation that meaningfully affects what's happening in classrooms. And, and that is what Mike is doing for us. Mm -hmm. um, he also will, again, those data systems where we have lots of information, but we don't always use it well. Mm -hmm. So Mike is helping us with that over this course of this year as well. I also, if I can, mm -hmm. jump in quickly that we have Kristen Robinson as assistant yes. principal this year and Monica Hall as the principal at Fort River. Mm -hmm. And we have Betsy Dinger as interim um, principal and Mike Malone as the interim assistant principal. At Amherst Regional Middle oh, School. Oh, middle school, thank yes. you. So I guess what I really want to say is that I cannot be more honored to work with such a solid team. They are the people who I want educating my children. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. um, working with our teachers who deserve to have the support and structure to make a difference for all of our children. So it's, it's like a great start to the year. It is like, mm -hmm. a, um, I know it's like corny to say, but it is a dream team. Mm -hmm. And I truly mean that. Um, every day okay. I, we're all <coughs> learning from each other. Mm -hmm. And that's true. How it that's is. True. So uh, how are we doing on time, Kim? We have about seven minutes. Okay. Would you, can I talk a little bit about Dr. Ferguson's I work? Mean, yes, absolutely. Okay. So I just would love to say that, you know, our um, administrative team, principals and, and Marta, went to the institute this summer in Cambridge, um, which was at sponsored, Harvard. was it Harvard? It was at yeah. Harvard. At yes. Harvard, and it was Dr. Ferguson really working with our leadership team around, and many leadership teams around, how are we creating um, plans for moving all of our students forward? So again, people can use the term the achievement gap. Um, some people use the term proficiency for all. It's really about taking each student and moving them forward. So um, those people who, you know, in the community who saw Dr. Ferguson speak this past year, really, um, I think many, many of them really kind of, um, the model that he was using really resonated, which is, um, a comprehensive model or the movement. How do you really coordinate resources um, and supports within the community, partnership with family engagement and really reaching out and working well with families. Um, also with using data, use it, uh, really focusing on instructional practices, so what happens within the schools. Um, 
and really and really strengthening partnerships. So he has this comprehensive model that we've been using as our framework and our leadership work this summer mm -hmm. was around um, not only looking at issues of um, equity mm -hmm. and uh, specifically being able to use our non-judgmental observational skills to notice um, topics that are specific to race, um, biases that may be um, at play within our school community and the wider community mm -hmm. to be really strong at um, observing. Mm -hmm. So we've had um, Michael Burkhart work with mm -hmm. us, who's a community member who's, who's done this for years and years in, in corporate America, mm -hmm. who's now joining our leadership team um, to help us move forward. That was a stellar um, opportunity for our week. Mm -hmm. And then we're really thinking about how does our district improvement plan um, demonstrate clearly the aspects that Dr. Ferguson um, so eloquently states that the research supports if you put these things in place that we're going to see all kids move. Mm -hmm. And then we need to really have some other areas where we focus on our um, strong connections with parents. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, Dr. Guevara's work is really looking at strengthening the community, the family engagement. Mm -hmm. So. I know it's just like I could go on for hours about these <laughs> topics, but it, it like is. One minute left. I know. Okay, so I'll go really <laughs> fast. And the last thing I'd love to be able to say, and we can talk, I know we'll get together again, yes. is that um, we have an amazing after school program yes. that's really pulled together. We have a partnership between the town, the nonprofits, mm -hmm. um, Capacidad and Mark's Meadow, the nonprofit, mm -hmm. and the current providers um, and the public school, and we are creating the most amazing after school opportunity for our children mm -hmm. at the elementary level and probably much more to come about what options families will be seeing. Yes, there'll be guests on, our, on the show in a, Very soon, in a few right? weeks. Yes, Jim Regan, Stacy LeSueur, yeah. and some of the um, providers will Beautiful. be there as well to talk about the program, Great. not just the academic intervention, Great. but also the enrichment portion of the program. And there's yeah. so many more things to talk about, yeah. Kim. I know, I it's know exciting. We close. <laughs> That's what we just, what, we took about a week off this summer. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause we laughs> I know. But it is, I guess the, the most important thing to close with is that, you know, great start of the year. Mm -hmm. We have made lots of movement, much yeah. more to come, mm -hmm. um, and we thank the community for yes. allowing us to work with, with their children. Yes. Absolutely. And thank you all for the work sure. that you've Thanks, you've Debbie. Done Thanks, this Maria. <laughs> thank you, Kim. <laughs> And that's it for today's program, Voices from Our Schools. I thank you all for tuning in to watch, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.